The operation of core internet routers can have interesting and potentially surprising impacts on some of the other protocols that run on top of the internet. You would think the router is pretty simple, they have one job to do, just move packets from you know, uh, one link to some other link that they, that they have access to. Uh, but it turns out that how they do that, and in certain cases how they get respond to overload, has interesting effects on other parts of the internet. So let's talk about one example of this. So this has to do with the policy that a router applies when it runs out of space to hold incoming packets. So remember that routers on the internet are store and forward routers. So when a packet arrives, they store it in some buffer. So I have an incoming packet here. I put the packet in, in my little storage space. And at some point, and what I'm doing is I'm moving packets to the front of this queue and I'm processing them and I'm figuring out what to do with them. Should I send them out on link one or link two or link three or whatever? So this is what a router is doing. It's receiving packets from the links that are connected to it, putting them in this buffer, and then processing the buffer and sending the packets on their way. This is what it does all day long, all the time, as fast as possible. However, it's possible that in certain cases, if there's lots of traffic arriving at this router from one of the links or from multiple links, this storage space can get full. So let's say that in this case, I, am, I have the, the storage space that I've allocated, my, maybe this is in memory or somewhere, is totally full. And so when a new packet arrives, there's nowhere to put it. And so now the router has an interesting decision to make, which is that it has to drop a packet. I've got no more space for packets. Um, I have a new packet. What do I drop? And so let's imagine, let's number these packets to make this example more interesting, and let's say that we number the packets in the order that they arrive. So this is packet one, two, three, four, and now here is packet five. And packet five arrives, I haven't been able to send off these other packets, I've got no space to hold packet five, what do I do? Now, and it, and it seems like the most fair thing to do, from some perspective, is to drop packet five. I mean, packet one got there first, or it got there before packet five did, and so if I'm gonna drop a packet, it seems natural to drop packet five. So that's a policy that's called drop tail. It means when I run out of space, I drop packets at the end of the queue. So this is the last packet in line, there's no space for it, so I would drop it, and I would just continue to try to route packets from the front of my queue. Now the interesting thing here is that drop tail turns out not to necessarily perform very well in certain cases, and here's the problem. The reason that this router is out of space, or one of the potential reasons, is that someone who's sending data through that router is transmitting too much data. It's trying to transmit too fast. And so I can drop packet five, but it's also possible that this is gonna to continue to happen. So somebody out there is sending me data too quickly, and I need to tell them, I need to send them a signal that I'm overloaded and you should slow down. That's, that's what happens, right? That's how the, the, the uh, that's how routers, this is the only signal that the routers can send to people that are sending data through them is by dropping packets. A packet drop is interpreted by one of the endpoints as a sign that something is wrong along the routing path and the typical response to that is to slow down and reduce the rate at which I'm trying to use the network. Now. If I drop the last packet I received, what happens is it takes longer for that signal to be received by the people that are using the network. So um, it takes longer for them to start to slow down. The other thing I can do is I can drop another packet in my queue and I can also, uh, one of the other policies I can apply is what's called drop head. I can drop the first packet in my buffer. This is, on some level, not fair, right? I mean, this, this packet's been waiting the longest to be transmitted, and so dropping it to make space for the last packet that arrived seems a little strange. But what happens is if I drop this packet, the people that are using the network that are transmitting too quickly, they get a signal faster than if I drop this packet. And by dropping packets from the head of my queue, that will cause people that are overloading the network to slow down more quickly, and that will actually, in certain cases, lead to fewer dropped packets. So to review, if I drop from the tail, then it takes the signal that I'm overloaded longer to propagate to the people that are overloading me, and they slow down more slowly, and more packets are dropped. 
If I drop from the head of the queue, that signal gets there quicker, they slow down faster, and the total number of packets that are dropped and potentially need to be retransmitted is small.